All right, for your viewing pleasure today, we're going to be building this Ravel GMC pickup truck with snowplow. And I don't know if I'm going to build it with the snowplow. I don't know about that. Might build it with these cool lights on the winch. Or is that a hydraulic pump? We'll find out. So this was one of those kits that used the 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. Looks like a pretty nice kit. I have one of these from years ago that is mostly still um, together. I don't know if all the pieces are there, but it's mostly there. It's like some kind of interesting uh, performance fuel-injected engine on that. I don't know. I'd like to build this as just a straight carbureted motor. Almost looks like a an engine from a Corvette, early Corvette. So let's go ahead and get the box open and see what we got inside. So the first thing on top is these beautiful tires right here. Nice and soft. Got excellent tread on them. They look to be no names on there, which is fine with me. Saves a little, should save a little bit of royalty cost. It should make the models cheaper, but models are expensive nowadays. Nice uh, glass there. Don't see any any flash to speak of on the on the windows. Tail lights got some nice clear tail lights. Those will be excellent for painting up. And we've got our four round headlights there. I'm not sure why there's four, but there are. I like the way Ravel packages everything. It's it's all nice and neat in their individual baggies. So this looks to be the snow plow assembly itself, all in one nice baggie. Uh, we got the plow itself, which is pretty cool. And then we got the attachments and all the bracing. We got looks like the hydraulic rams right there. That's nice. The body is in its own bag again. Don't really see any flashing at all. That's really a very nice uh, kit there as far as the detail goes. Uh, very clean. Save a lot of time in assembly not having to shave stuff. Looks like it's got dual batteries. And we got the rest of the goodies in this bag. So we've got the rear end, the front end, the frame with dual gas tanks. That's pretty cool. Our wheel back shocks. Looks like the steering column right there. You just got some engine parts. Transfer case. Hood. Hood looks nice. Looks like the back is a separate piece that we're going to have to assemble. Should not be an issue there. Got a nice uh, spare tire there. And again, the parts themselves really are very clean. Got some individual suspension pieces here. And uh, this is nicely molded in white, so painting this will be a breeze. Let's take a look at the chrome tree here like just again the basic uh, stuff here chrome bumpers nice wheels wheels uh, you can see through the holes are really nice uh, it's too bad they don't make these open grilled I would be so nice if those were actually open grilled they could they could do it if they wanted to but nice custom steering wheel and looks like a couple these must be for fog lights, I guess. That must be where the other two. Oh, no, these are the um, KCs on the top. That's what those are. So we got that roll cage. Got that. Yeah, we got that oblique uh, roll bar back there. That is a big manual. Man, that is like a book right there. 
And then we've got the decals in there. Let's take a look at these real quick. It's a bright blue paper right there. We've got some nice Colorado plates. We may go ahead and use those. Glacier plowing. That's a pretty cool uh, decal to put on the door. Lawn tree service. And then we got the um, trim. So it doesn't look like it's chrome. Let's just be a pinstripe instead of the chrome trim. And I uh, got some safety stripes here. 4x4. Four four. The 4x4 four is pretty cool. GMC. That'll be nice to put across the windshield. We just might, might very well go ahead and do that too. Put our protective sleeve back on there let's take a look at the instructions real quick this is typical with models they want you to build the engine first they get you all excited about that let's see part 88 does it say what that is curious if that's actually it might actually be a diesel engine Part 88. Let's see what that is. Fuel injection. Fuel injection manifold. Okay, so it's just it is a it is a fuel injected engine. It's too bad it's not a carbureted engine, but okay, we'll uh, we'll 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 just build it the way it is. Uh, looks like we've got an optional sunroof right there. We can cut out. I don't really ever bother with that type of stuff, but. You could if you really wanted to. Very big, easy to read um, instructions here for even the blindest of model builders. And then there are some photo photos of the actual model there. Looks pretty good in black and white. There's our decal placements right there. All right. So we've got a big old, big old antenna right the CB antenna right there, too. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get this uh, unpackaged out of the baggies, washed, cleaned. I'm going to trim some pieces off, all that stuff. And we will be back, and uh, I'll let you know how it's going so far. Well, I've got a lot of the parts taken off the tree, and there's definitely a lot of parts to take off the tree. But nothing overly complicated. So all this stuff right here, I'm going to be hitting this with black, and then picking certain things out individually, like the transfer case. I might just cut that off, actually. But everything else would go black, and then I'll pick out the exhaust on the here and ru rust it up a little bit make it look like rusted cast iron same thing with this we're just going to hit that with flat black for now this tree the wheel backs flat black got the radiator hose and fan flat black the chassis will be assembled flat black the engine will be assembled. I've got both halves cut off, the cylinder heads, and stock valve covers. Uh, Chevy engine orange. We might do, well, well, I was going to say we might do Chevy blue, but I think we'll do orange. Uh, these are the chrome performance, because you know chrome gets you home and adds 50 horsepower. Uh, we'll save those for the parts bin. The fuel injection. Uh, I'll probably dull coat this. This part, I may actually go ahead and paint this engine orange as well. And then the only piece that's going to be somewhat silvery, aluminum-y looking will be the upper section of the intake manifold. This is where the little performance air filter is going to go. Not a huge fan of that, but that's the way they designed the kit. Got the very nice dashboard and has very nice details. The instrument cluster and 
that will be, well, maybe Saddle Brown. I'm thinking of a brown interior for this. Maybe green. Maybe we'll go with a olive green or something. Nice seat. Nothing to do there. Uh, there are no, unless I am missing something, no. There are no door panel details to speak of on that. So, in a way, that's a little bit of a bummer, but not going to really see it anyway, so we can live with that. The body here, uh, again, upon closer inspection, is pretty good. I'm going to need to do a little bit of sanding on the edge down here. There is just a little tiny hair of some hanging down stuff there. It's also a little rough around here, but not terribly uh, difficult to clean that up. Um, flat black, and then uh, I'll mask this off in here, and then we'll do some sort of a body color. I got, I'm probably going to do like a brown gold kind of a color, maybe two-tone. We'll have to see how that feels like it's going to shape out. The back is nice. Not really any kind of issues there with that. I've got to clean up the spot where I cut it off the tree. Let's go ahead and do a test fit real quick on that. Looks like we're going to have to squeeze that close. Uh, we're going to have to bungee that together. That won't be too big of a deal. Let's go ahead and check the fitment of the hood real quick here. Yeah. It's pretty good. The thing that's disappointing though is that right off the bat though, you can see where the hood hinge goes into. There's a little bit of a gap right there. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Maybe I'll... Uh, Even if you push the hood all the way up, it's still there. So maybe I'll uh, have to fill that in, I guess, because that does actually stand out quite a bit there. But that's what, I guess that's why this is skill level four. <laughs> and you got the rear end, the bed to do here. That's a nice bed. I think I'll just paint this part black, this body color, and then that'll be a nice easy way to give us a bed liner. Of course, I guess we could do a bed liner that's the same color as the body. They do do that. Uh, nice tailgate. Doesn't say Chevy on it, though. In fact, I wonder if there's even a Chevy anywhere on this body now that I think about it. Doesn't look like there's anything on there that labels this a Chevy or a GMC, actually. So, all right, guys, that's what we've got off the tree so far. I'm going to get this stuff painted and do some partial assembly, and then we will be back um, fairly soon. So far, there's no issues to speak of assembling anything here. In fact, it's all going very, very well. So I got the chassis mostly assembled, and I left the wheels to be rollers on this one. I can still change my mind and glue one or two in place if I feel like that's an issue. The exhaust, I forgot to point this out earlier, is molded into the chassis, but it is still molded as separate tubes, at least. So it looks very nice, and I'll be able to pick that out with a silver sharpie or some other silver paint the detail on the suspension parts is excellent uh, the rear end the front end the rear end they both look differential the camel humps there they both look great the springs all look nice um, the fuel tanks there <laughs> the the Exploding fuel tanks there, and you're getting hit in the side. Woo, let's play with our models. The engine is another fantastic beauty. Uh, this went together flawlessly. Um, the one thing I did uh, notice was that the heads, even though they look the same, 
and they both are keyed, one head fit one side of the engine better than the other way around. So check that before you go gluing it down. But otherwise, it is an excellent, excellent engine. So that's where we're at so far. I'm going to let this stuff dry, and we will get the rest of it painted up on the trees here. So I've got to paint all these trees here. And just wanted to give a quick update to the assembly so far. And if the rest of this uh, goes this easy, we'll be done with this thing in no time. Uh, for this particular build, I decided to dig out the uh, squadron glue plastic weld. This is the first time I'm using it. And so far, I really, really like this stuff. My typical hobby glue has been uh, a mixture in this old tester's bottle here. A mixture about 50-50 of acetone and MEK that has been working excellent as well but I figured I would go ahead and try some of the squadron stuff to see what it's like and this stuff works just as good it's very very um, uh, fragrant let's put it that way fragrant so and you definitely get high on this stuff so not that I'm saying you should I'm just saying that is some potent stuff right there and it seems to weld the plastic very, very quickly. Um, no issues at all. So that is definitely a good model glue. If anybody is looking for some, this is not a paid sponsorship. It's just what I'm finding out so far. Anybody that prefers to buy the model glue instead of making their own, this is definitely working out very nice. I also like the, the Plastistruck glue as well. The, uh, the uh, plastic struck styrene glues, those are excellent as well. But this, this really uh, is really doing a good job so far. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing, uh, get some paint on this baby and uh, get her assembled. So I got pretty much everything painted here and it's been a couple days and let everything dry. The chassis is looking good. I just mocked the engine in place. Need to paint the transmission still, mask that, and spray that aluminum. Body is a... Uh, this, this rose gold is a very nice shade of, of uh, color there. It's, uh, it's interesting how red it gets in certain angles there. The cab on this thing is looking pretty good too. Got a nice gloss on the paint. Uh, that's what they shot of clear over that rose gold. Fortunately, though, this side, I got a little bit, uh, well, I guess I got a little bit exuberant with the paint there, and I got a little bit of a run here. So uh, this is the reason I let this sit for a couple days. I normally do anyway, so that the paint solidifies good. I am going to wet sand this down a little bit and wax it and I'll probably end up just going ahead and doing that to the whole body. If that comes out and looks good, it'll be assembled that way. We'll just leave it and move on. If not, I'm going to strip it, redo it. It'll probably take less time to strip it than to do it the other way, but that's the way we're going to do it. The hood looks good as well, so no issues with that. And I'm just not going to bother with that stupid gap thing because I just don't really feel like fixing it. I don't even know if I can get this in here now. Yeah. Well, anyway, something like that. So, let's go ahead and assemble the bed and uh, all that fun stuff. That'll be easy. Um, this stuff, I need to assemble the radiator with the um it's round for the fan there uh got the gas jug i might as well paint that red i guess i don't know i don't know if i'll throw it in the bed or not uh, the exhaust manifold and rust those up i got some rust pens testers rust colored pens we'll hit on that make that look beautiful the interior i did with that brown color uh, over black give it a little bit of shadowing on the seat there and then I just went down here and rehit the carpet with some uh, acrylic flat black. 
and that I really like the look of that acrylic stuff. It, it really lays nice once it's dry. This is that leather boot leather color I did for the dash. This is a brown that I really do like for uh, the various interiors. Um, this particular truck does not have decals, so I'm just going to pick out the details of the dash, glue it in, call it good. The shocks, um, I think I'm going to hand paint the um, the boots. I think I'm going to hand paint those blue. I'll have to look up what the color of Bilstein shocks are. I know it seems like they're yellow and blue, but I don't remember which combination. If they're blue with the yellow boot or yellow with a blue boot, I don't remember now. But I think that's what we'll do, some kind of Bilstein shock. Otherwise, I'll just might, I'll either leave them or I'll just paint them. <laughs> Maybe I'll paint them red. The bed, nothing really. Um, interesting there. I, I really like that chalkboard black. It's extremely flat and it covers extremely well. You don't need a whole lot of it to cover anything. So that's where we're at so far. Just a quick assembly update here. The dash turned out lovely. You can see all the detail popped out there. Very nice moldings on this. Even though according to the fuel tank on the bottom of the frame there, this thing was made in 77. But the lettering on the instruments there is very prominent and easy to uh, pick out. So I went ahead and chromed the lettering with the pen, chromed the trim, the stereo, the vents, all that stuff. And then I did a black wash on all that, which washed down past the lettering and made the lettering stand out while still giving me a black background like the real gauges have and the vents there too so that's beautiful looking great just got to put the steering wheel on that the engine same deal i gave it a black wash i picked out the starter and the fuel pump and then gave the motor itself a little bit of a black wash if this camera would like to focus there. And uh, yeah, it's got a few thousand miles on it there. The gaskets are starting to leak. Typical Chevy, small block Chevy. Uh, did a Purolator blue oil filter and looking quite nice on there. So the transfer case is interesting because it has a the uh, engine has a hole on the transmission there to line up the transfer case to but the hole on the transfer case is the little pin is quite a bit smaller as you can see so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this I think this is going to work I'm going to glue this to the actual drive shafts and get that into place and then I'll butt the engine up against that because there's obviously way too much play in that uh, to get it lined up perfectly. And uh, I think it'll be the easier way to make everything <clears throat> line up. The body turned out pretty nice here. Let's go ahead and set this down here like that. I gave it that sanding like I was shown earlier or talking about earlier. And I gave it a light misting of the rose gold and then another uh, couple light coats of clear. And as you can see, it is basically, I'm not going to say flawless, but it's pretty dang gum good. You can see that beautiful reflection right there on the side. So that's looking good. That's ready to go. I got to pick out the, bo the uh, battery and the washer bottle but other than that I'm not gonna really worry about wiring anything because probably display that hood closed anyway I don't know maybe I'll get a hair at my butt to wire this engine small block Chevy they're pretty easy to wire out but that's where we're at so far I realized uh, oh I got the Bilstein shocks painted up there these do have a a red boot or a blue boot excuse me 
blue boot and yellow shock so that's what I did for that the uh, bed here is um, cut off and I had to paint the bed sides the inside of the rail because I didn't realize I hadn't got any paint on that so it was showing white plastic around the edges there so that is sitting there drying right now and it's unfortunate this bed um, the sides have little hole little pegs but this bedside doesn't have any holes in it so it just, I guess it just butts up against there and you're supposed to glue it and pray so that's where we're at so far I'm gonna get the bed assembled get the engine assembled and we'll be back back for a, um, a look at it before final 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 assembly all right there's been a few things I've changed since the last clip and I want to go through those here and yeah, while things are drying I've got the grill drying here trying to keep that centered so that the uh, black levels out in there so the frame I decided to go ahead and dirty dirty it up and I also dirtied up the transfer case a little bit transfer case is nice they got a locating hole down in here that you put the pin through stupid camera why don't you focus there we go and that locates it exactly where it needs to be so I went with a uh, mud effect on this lightly mudded not too terribly crazy but we're just gonna go with the idea that he washed the body but he kind of forgot about the undercarriage so I used some of that textured rust-oleum uh, multicolored paint I sprayed the in a direction that would be going as you're driving down the road I sprayed it and like that so I got a lot of the caking on the um, gas tanks along the frame and being textured gives it a nice appearance of mud dirt sand all that stuff the exhaust I painted with a steel this stuff right here this buffing metalizer and then I went over that with the um, some blotching of some brown to kind of dirty up the exhaust the exhaust tips are the same thing on this side I kind of mudded them up as if the tires are splashing up against there same way with this side and you can see the texture right there too get a nice shot of that there now this side the back side is relatively clean because that's not the side getting plastered with the sand and dirt and gravel and mud and everything else down here I sprayed some gloss black to simulate uh, an oil leak running down the transmission and the same thing up in here and I caked it on a little bit too just like so a little bit of an oil leak on that small block Chevy which is very typical this is not we're not going for a pristine showroom truck but we're going for a truck that's had a few thousand miles put on it 40 50 thousand miles maybe and uh, nothing really to speak of the interior it's still basically the way it was so is the shocks I do need to get those on before I get too crazy on this so here's the engine so far I got the exhaust manifolds rusted up painted brown accessory drive is on I need to paint the alternator still let's see I gave us some a little bit of an oiled uh, dirty oiled runs around the valve covers there we'll get to the bottom side in just a second here so it's not too crazy up top a little bit of a run but down below is where it always 
gets nasty. So I had the engine mounted upside down like this in a paint cup, and I ch -ch -ch and ch -ch -ch the gloss black to simulate oil running down from the front oil seal, which is another common place these things always like to leak, and it's running down the back of the oil pan, and we'll probably got a little bit of a rear main seal leak as well, because they always leak on these small block Chevys, even when you replace them, they still leak. So that's where the oil is coming from, mainly running onto the frame, collecting there as well. Um, this should have power steering pump, frankly, but they didn't think about that, I guess. So, uh, did a little bit of weathering on the transmission as well. Not too much, but as the, as it runs back further, blows off the back, obviously the transmission is not going to get quite as kicked on unless it is leaking as well. And at this point in time, it's not. So... I think that's a pretty nice looking engine right there if I do say so myself. I don't think I'm going to bother wiring it though. I've enjoyed doing the detailing, the painting, but uh, you know, it's not going to be seen most of the time, so I don't think I'm going to bother wiring it, but that may change as we get through the video. I'll figure that out here. It's not going to be that hard to wire it, frankly. It would look pretty cool though. And if I go ahead and wire it, I might as well go ahead and run the heater lines, too, because I did notice that on the firewall on this truck that it does have... Uh, oh, I painted all this, too. We'll go over that in just a second. There are a couple provisions up here for the heater hoses to run into, so I may drill those out and do that. Uh, the radiator support and all that's installed, painted, looking good. Batteries painted looking good. I uh, did the water bottle. Painted up that water bottle there. And then painted blue around there just, you know, because we got washer fluid in there. And I kind of lightly painted the lines black there. The wiring harnesses, hoses, things like that. So, did the turn signals. Turn signal amber right there. Painted that with the Molotile Chrome to give it the trim as well. And then went and set the body up like this to kind of level it out. And I just kind of blip, 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 and let it just kind of puddle up in there. And it dries like you wouldn't believe. It's just beautiful the way that turns out doing it that way. So, got the Chrome trim. Chrome trim around the windows, the door handles, uh, all Molotile chromed on this one. Not Sharpie, I'm Molotile this one. The wipers are painted. So the body is good to go. I just need to get the interior slapped in there, get the glass interior, and then we'll get the back on. And this will be done. The dash is still looking beautiful. We already knew that, though, right? So this kit's a little bit older. It doesn't have the decals that they later added for, like, the door panels and stuff. So it is what it is. We're not going to really see that much stuff anyway. But, you know, we've got some big, big uh, chomper tires here. So he's he's kicking up some mud, folks. <laughs> you wouldn't have those chomper big old chomper tires if we weren't making a little bit of of uh fun in the fun in the dirt there steering wheel's looking nice this, this camera is so funny how it's like oh we'll focus in it oh no we're not okay so that's looking really nice there just acrylic paint just this uh earth brown actually believe it or not for the steering wheel handle looks really good so that's where we're at so far, and if everything goes good, um, we should be probably assembled in the next video clip. If not, we'll come back and explain <laughs> why not, or what I forgot to show.
And here it is in all of its wonderful glory, the, I'm going to call it a 76 GMC pickup truck. Well, the box doesn't actually give you a year on that. Anyway, the, uh, I think the um, code on the gas tank there when it was manufactured was like 1979, I think, or 78, something like that. So I'm going to say 76, 77 probably. And this is how it's all turned out some of the issues with this kit you know it's just the age of the kit i guess i don't know you always blame the age of the kit i know the hood doesn't quite fit right there but the real ones <laughs> tended to be lifted up back there anyway because the way this crumple hood was made it kind of screwed up the hinges and bent the hood a little bit and stuff so that's you know you could say the hood hinges out of adjustment there um the rose gold paint is a very nice color. The tail lights are just a transparent piece. We went and did the chrome trim around it there with the Molotile pen and used the tester stoplight red and then just used some acrylic white for the uh, backup lights. The tailgate does function. So if we need to load some cargo into the back of our model kit, we can. Whoops, and yes, I did make this a roller, which there's a problem right there with making it a roller. It's not terribly rolly, but it, there's some good resistance there, but you got to be careful still. Uh, did, uh, let me see if I get the light over here. Did Colorado license plates, those are the ones that were in there. And <clears throat> I just cut the decal out with the hobby knife, just the backing paper and all, and just super glued it. So it gives a little bit of a... 3d dimension to that so it actually makes it look like a license plate sticking out off of the bumper instead of just like a decal or something like that just being flush up against the bumper there's actually something sticking out so that looked out that turned out pretty good um, some of the issues uh, going back to the issues for whatever reason, this Rust-Oleum paint, I've had this problem on a couple other kits. It just remains soft, and I don't know what the deal is. You can see right here, I used these hair ties to hold the body together while I was letting the interior glue and the uh, back as well, which I know did pop out on me, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that uh, left a mark in the paint, even though it's like, it was like two weeks sitting there before I, you know, glued it and needed something to hold it together. And it also left a mark actually on the door handle as well. The paint just stays soft for some reason. Yeah, it did the same thing over there too. So I'm just going to say it's some kind of a dent that got into the body at some point. Maybe he had something strapped on the roof there that dented it. Uh, but needless to say, that's an, that's an issue that I'm finding with those rust paints is they never seem to fully harden up. Now, it's dry to the touch. I mean, it's not tacky to the touch at all, and it hasn't been. But if you put any kind of pressure on it for any given amount of time, that's what happens, unfortunately. So just bear that in mind, something you don't necessarily... I don't know if you ever hear from anybody else with these rust paints. I'm going to change perspectives a little bit here. Take a look at the interior real quick here. You can see it. Two-tone brown looks pretty nice. Let's see the dashboard and the interior. Looks really good in there. Did the spare tire. The Molotol chrome pin there after matting it and I this is glued into place now I just use the canopy glue to glue it into place as I hit the model of course that's really good so the underside you know he didn't he has he went and washed his truck but didn't do the underside of it there so got some dirt some grime a little bit of mud uh, sand maybe a little bit of rust in there but the oil uh, runs on the engine running all the way back there see that also got fresh oil the attempt to replicate fresh oil 
right there. You know, oil's running, leaking out of the front. Well, it could be leaking out of the steering pump, but we'll say front oil seal. It's running down along the frame rails, and that's where it's happening to collect, and a little bit over here. That's why it's kind of more glossy there. Did the Bilstein uh, colored shocks, the blue and uh, yellow, and painted those with the some brown just went in there and with the brown to kind of dirty them up you can see those ones back there kind of forgot to do the underside of this but and no one's going to see it anyway so the hood likes to pop out but there we go and that doesn't want to stay but there we go yeah i think that turned out pretty good so Anyway, that's the problem with uh, detailing the hood is that then, or under the hood is that you then you you want to uh, you want to leave the hood open and uh, you got to figure out how to display it to do that. But anyway, that's how it turned out. It's not too bad. It'll look good on the shelf. And uh, yeah, the tires uh, the tires are really nice. I did flat coat the tires. And any time I do that, they always seem to stay sticky for days after that. Uh, I did paint the, hit the tires with some brown and then sanded them, sanded it off there. The brown didn't really, I was hoping the brown would get into the tread of the tires. It, it didn't really, it's not really noticeable to me. So anyway, but I'm happy with it. I think overall it turned out pretty nice. You can see that color of license plate. So anyway, guys, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching another build series. This one actually took a little while longer than the other ones did for I don't know whatever reason, but it uh, it turned out pretty good. I think I did about as good as I could with what <laughs> the way it was turning out. So. It, uh, I don't like the two-piece cab. I, I just don't like that on these. It's not easy to get that to stay together. And as this popped out over here, but I'm not going to worry about that. It's, it is what it is. So, um, one thing I did find that I, that I did on this that did work is putting that in is that I glued the top first. And this is actually something I'm going to try on the next GMC slash Chevy pickup build that I do is I got another one. Um, uh, glue the you can glue the top first, and then you can get that you can get that spread the cab apart, get the interior inside, and once it's all in there, squeeze it back together, and then glue around there. But <clears throat> you, this that could be done to paint the back with the rest of the body, I think. But I'm gonna try it on the next build, see if that theory actually works so all right guys anyway thank you very much for watching we'll see you again right here on nick's collectible creations peace out everybody Woo.